back to the morning show here on Arise News. Now for business updates across the globe, Rotus Odiri joins us. Good morning, Rotus. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, morning Fai. Yeah. Good morning to all our viewers out there. We begin uh, with Apple. Apple, over the last two days, lost about $200 billion in uh, market cap, in market value. It's uh, dragged the NASDAQ down for about four consecutive days now because Apple has such a large waiting. What's the problem? It's the rumor uh, going around. Uh, I think this was a, a story broken by Bloomberg, or is it the Wall Street Journal? Wall Street, that, Wall Street Journal, yeah. So that, um, uh, that China is um, banning iPhones for SOEs, for state-owned enterprises, and saying government workers should not use iPhones. So on that news, um, they, you know, some folks were selling Apple stock and the stock dropped. Uh, again, if we look at the Nasdaq, the Nasdaq also dropped uh, yesterday. Uh, so yeah, 0.89%, but the last four days now the Nasdaq has been down. Um, and there are some, there are headwinds as far as, you know, the iPhone 15, I think it's supposed to be coming out on Tuesday next week or so. So this is not good news coming ahead of the launch. But anyway, China, about 19% of Apple's revenues. There's also falling demand, deflationary, uh, deflation pressure in China. Huawei, that's another bit of news there. Huawei has come out with a new phone. Somehow, somewhere, they managed, I think it's made, the phone has chips that were made by TSM, TSMC or so, which somehow found its way past US sanctions. So Washington is pretty worried about that. So Huawei, there's some competition in China. And then um, US student loan repayments are starting next month. So if you've got a loan and you have to pay back, there's only so much money. The opportunity cost of buying uh, a new phone is not paying your loan. And then a higher interest rate environment. There's a tweet I saw from a hedge fund uh, manager, Dan Niles. Uh, he runs a hedge fund where he says, just to translate all this to English, he's shorting Apple stock. He says the same thing there, 19% of revenues impacting them. Huawei resurgence, student loan repayment October. He then says quarter three was the fourth quarter in a row where you saw revenues down year on year. And it's going to force investors to question Apple's price earnings ratio, which is 29 times, which is higher than the S&P, which is 21x. So that's basically what he's saying there. So Apple in a bit of, uh, of trouble. My man P. Diddy, he won his first round uh, in court against Diageo. He's suing Diageo for racial discrimination, saying that they supported more white-owned brands of, uh, of liquor as opposed to his own. Um, Diageo filed a motion in court to dismiss the lawsuit and take it to arbitration. Yesterday, a court, the judge ruled that, nope, um, this is going to go to trial. So I think in the, your folks are the lawyers. In, in legal terms, or this doctor is, uh, in legal terms, is going to the exploration phase, which is where he's supposed to gather evidence to support his case. We move to Nigeria. The Bureau of Statistics putting out trade data. This is very, very informative data here because there's a whole lot as far as boosting trade, trade within Africa, Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreements, and so on and so forth. So 1.28 trillion hour trade surplus. That was more exports than imports, the difference between the two. Exports 7 trillion for the second quarter of this year. Imports 5.7, um, 8.5% quarter on quarter growth versus Q1. As, as usual, uh, crude oil made up almost 80% of our exports, 5.58 trillion. Non-oil exports was 20.37. And you put this against GDP data, where crude oil, this sector has been contracting, while non oil, oil has been growing and driving the economy. It's where our money comes from. Now, you look at exports by region. Europe was the largest. I think the Netherlands was the, the largest country, 3.1 3 trillion. Asia in second place, 1.7. North America, 1.37. Look at Africa, only 747 billion out of your total exports went towards Africa. Look at the ECOWAS region, only 425 billion. So very, very low. We are still not trading enough with Africa compared to the other regions. Imports, um, 1.9 trillion. Look at the, 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 gulp, the bulk of it was machinery and transport equipment, which is when you look at manufacturers, when they talk about the dollar and the impact of the rising, um, the, um, the depreciation of the Naira, you can see that we are import dependent. We've, we imported more machine and transport equipment than, um, than refined petrol, which was 1.6 trillion. Food and live animals, 662 billion. Uh, what else? There were a whole lot of numbers coming in from this report. Um, if you look at imports by region, Asia, 40% of our imports came from Asia. China, of course, the bulk of that. Europe was in second place. North America, look at Africa again, 237 billion. Your ECOWAS region, just 52 billion. So again, Africa trade lagging behind. And then agriculture, very important to point this out. 
Total trade, only $735 billion. Your exports were about $280 billion, most of which was raw commodities, shelled cashew nuts and so on and so forth. Look at your imports, far exceeding your agricultural imports, which is emphasizing the fact that Nigeria, the uh, emergency declaration of food, food, uh, food emergency that uh, President Tinbu declared, you can see it in the numbers. Wheat from Poland, I believe, was one of the largest imports that came in. So look, our trade data, they take away from this Crude oil, we're still disproportionately dependent on crude. Um, and also, we need to diversify our non oil exports. Rufaya said this, Dr. said this, Ayo, you've all said this, more value added goods that need to be exported um, from Nigeria. Uh, if not, we'll continue to see the same numbers. More value added goods, but the question is competitive advantage. So, where do we have it? In all of these things, do we have it in machinery? Obviously, we don't have it now because we don't have the power to produce machinery right. in the first place. Do we have it in raw materials? Yes. So how can we do sort of like a backward integration? The easiest way for us is for those companies to start production of those machinery here with our raw materials. So I will favor, rather than taking our mineral resource away, that lithium factory you've been talking about, mm. Nasarawa, to be able to bring about lithium. I will favor, even let's start from the basic, refineries to refine our oil road yep, tools. Yep, 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 yep. Petrol right. refineries. Yes. I will favor gold refineries. I will favor other solid mineral refineries in this country to start first. Do you know that the industry of cutting diamond is a very highly skilled industry? Yeah. And most of the African countries, we don't have that expertise. So most of the diamond is taken to Antwerp mm. in Belgium to go cut. Almost that's like refining fuel. Yeah. Overseas. That's yeah. a specialized yeah. field on its own. Yeah, yeah. So how can we crack all those things and produce with it? That's the biggest challenge. And that's why we need power mm. first. We need power on the grid. We need to look for alternatives. Also, we need to show up our production base, give people skills, Indeed. quick skills to be able to do these things. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Yeah, absolutely. So let, let me, what is that? drawn your attention yesterday to, to um, an issue with regards to uh, multiple taxation. Okay, yes, just wanted yes. to bring that up, right, especially right. because um, yesterday I talked about, and when we talked about, was it yesterday or two days ago, um, President Tinubu um, securing pledges from India. And what we had said was that, yes, it's one thing to secure pledges, but in order for it to work, we need to create an enabling environment in the nation. And we also talked about the importance of sub subnationals. So beyond the federal government, even states mm. making their, um, their state attractive for investors, we looked at what's happening in Anambra with the Anambra Investment Summit, what's going on in, um, in what's in, going Enugu. on in Enugu. Yeah, yeah. We looked at also Kaduna Investment Summit yeah. um, happening and had um, brought an attention because one of the challenges that business owners face, even beyond investors, is multiple taxation. And that's an issue that the government, the federal government, is looking to um, you know, harmonize with, yeah. the, with the joint tax board. But in Lagos State, one of the things that we find is, um, and, and it happens in other states as well, whereby small businesses are being hampered. Yeah. They are killing small businesses because of multiple taxes. You say small business. So I just wanted to highlight, especially in the, in the you know, for event sectors, yeah. if a bit more, but because of our time, I can't go into gotcha, detail, gotcha, but hopefully gotcha. next time. Apple shares falling by 3% in yeah. the uh, Chinese market. Biggest market. They sell about uh, forty something percent of their phones in yeah. uh, China. Yeah. Where China is big market, second largest economy. Now, because the Chinese officials have unofficially instructed government officials not to bring iPhones to work <laughs> and not to use it for office work, yeah. then you had that drop in Apple shares. Okay. Well, no statement, no official statement has been issued, but this will be understandable within the context of the competition between China and the U.S. Yeah. You recall that in 2019, the uh, 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 Commerce uh, Department in the U.S. placed Huawei on the entity list, mm. restricting access of Huawei, the leading you know, uh, Chinese uh, phone company, having access to microchips yeah. you know, provided in the U.S. So they restricted it. Now Huawei has now produced and I think eight nanometer, you know, uh, chip yeah. produced in mainland China, yeah. and they've produced one phone called Mate Pro 60 or so, mm. which is now supposed to flood the market. Retailers are taking that uh, phone, you know, to push into the market, and China now comes through the back door 
and says, don't use, use iPhone, iP uh, iPhone in, for, for government work. Yeah. The fear is that this may be copied by family members, by ordinary people, and Apple will take a, a, a bigger hit. So it's all within this competition, you know, trade competition, market competition between China and the US. As for Nigeria, yeah. you mentioned the, the foreign trade report by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. As expected, the trade surplus that they are talking about it's so small, 2.2 trillion. 1.2. Is it 1.2? 1.2? Okay, no, yeah. I mean half year. Yeah, okay, 1.2 okay, is for, half, for, for, for second quarter, yeah, quarter, quarter of yeah, 2023. Yeah. For half year, January to June, yeah. it's 2.2 right, trillion. That's correct. Okay, you call it trade surplus. But when you look at it in terms of details, you know, Nigeria is uh, at the shorter end of uh, the bargain. Yeah. But China, which you keep mentioning. Now, what happened in terms of import and export with China? Mm. I thought in 2018, we had something they call currency swap. The one swap. The, yeah. the Naira and the renminbi. Yeah. The renminbi now is suffering against the dollar. Yeah. So what is the implication? You know, 500 billion as at November 2022. Mm. Okay, what's happening with the renminbi? What is the central bank telling us about it? Are, 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 we, are the Chinese making payments in Naira? Mm. If you have any information in yeah. that regard. It's supposed to be renewed. So they've been coming up. The central bank said that they would renew that, um, that policy as far as the, the one swap. Doctor, it's a volume problem. You have to be able to have enough volumes to support all the trade of people who are buying items from China that want to use Naira right. for them. So that it's a volume issue. That's what has not been So we're not benefiting we from, not from benefiting. the currency swap. <laughs> uh, let, let the central bank be honest about it. Right.